Hey everybody, so today I'm going to be making a side mandala. Typically the mandala, the center is in the middle of the shirt, but today I'm going to be placing it on the side here. It can also be placed on this side or on the bottom or on the top. It kind of just depends on what you're looking to do. And so today I'm going to go with a 12-point mandala. I've had a couple people ask that I do a video on the 12-point mandala. And so essentially, you just start out with a nice flat canvas or t-shirt. And you choose your center point, which is going to be here for me. And so we'll fold up. And also this shirt has been soaked in soda ash for 20 minutes and then spun out in the washer and then I let it dry for I don't know about four or five hours before I am even going to attempt the mandala fold because I like to let it dry a little bit and then it'll suck up the dye a lot better I found that if you don't let it dry that the water can act as almost a barrier and then you won't get the saturation that you actually want. So this first fold is a four point fold and we're going to do a four point and then an eight point and then a twelve point. I've seen people do more but I've never attempted it. And I'm certainly not going to try that today. But I've seen people do like 16 and um, even more folds than that, I think. Never really counted them, but they looked exquisite. So right here would be an 8 point mandala. And a lot of people are fine with that. And... It's great, but I'm going to do one more fold, and that'll accomplish the 12 point. So again, just keeping everything flat and lined up is a big key. I want everything lined up well here, and so we... Keep going. So again, that's a four point fold there. And I'm thinking about doing an ice dye or a hot water irrigation. Not quite sure what I'm set on yet, but I want to make sure that I get good saturation. So again, this is an 8 point mandala, and most people are fine with that. I'm going to do the extra fold. It gets a little messy. Up towards this front first inch or two, maybe inch and a half. And so that's the 12 point side mandala all folded up. And I'm going to strategically place rubber bands so that while I'm wrapping my mandala, my folds don't come undone. Because I've had that happen a lot. So just kind of learn by experience. And so I've got a nice little slip knot already tied in. Just going to slip it over here. And we'll wrap it two or three times. And then we'll give it a good pull to lock that in. And then we'll wrap it again a 
another two or three times. Give that a good pull. And then kind of go up a little ways and bite down on that fabric. Got to kind of keep tension on the sinew. But essentially this is the creating the pattern. And I just kind of do a zigzag. But I also like to keep pressure on the sinew with each wrap just because I've noticed that it can get kind of loose when you pull it tight if you don't keep it or yeah if you don't keep it pulled tight then you can end up with some loose wraps and that's it's not the worst thing in the world but I just like to have some nice crisp wraps that's how you typically end up with the best white lines in a mandala And so again, just zigzagging back and forth. I usually wrap each part about six to 10 times. And you can see that the rubber bands are really helping me keep my folds intact while I kind of wrench on it. So wrapping a mandala typically takes a while. Um, this is a, a smaller tank top, so it probably won't take me too long, which is why I chose it for the video. So, yeah, I think I might do a hot water irrigation to finish this off just because I've never done it and I'd like the experience and I think it'd be good to get it on camera for other people to learn and grow from watching the experience figure out kind of what to do with the hot water irrigation. I know that you just essentially set your dye. You can do powder dye or liquid dye with the hot water irrigation. I'll probably do a mix of both. We'll see. Honestly, I'm not sure. I don't have the idea in my head quite yet. I have to think about that. But I know that I want good saturation. That is for sure. And the idea with the hot water irrigation <coughs> is essentially you're just using heat to 
start that chemical reaction for the dye is my understanding so that the dye process happens a lot quicker and the dye bonds to the fabric a lot quicker because of the heat and again I'm no professional on that but that's my current understanding And so to take these rubber bands off, I just kind of put them over my sinew wrapper and then over the rest of the mandala real quick. And it's gone. And I think I've said this in other videos, but basically when you're doing a new part of the wrap, it's typically good to kind of squeeze it after you've wrapped it once and pull this way and then pull this way just to make sure that you grab a nice point on this side again certainly not imperative but it's just about what design you're looking to get and I like that sharp point on my mandala. Almost done here over halfway done, probably about three-fourths of the way done here. And you can do some bigger chunks if you want to, but just make sure that you pull it tight so that you get a good chunk in there with good lines. <clears throat> And again, that rubber band is really helping me keep my keep my folds in place while I saw, tie the sinew. Excuse me. Just a couple more wraps here and then we'll be on to the dyeing process. I'm going to look at my color palette or color wheel and see what kind of colors we're feeling today. Make sure you pull that sinew until it locks down on itself. And this last little bit. And it's nice to keep the symmetry kind of going small to bigger to biggest. And here's where you can really get good saturation with your dye is in between these little guys if you um, you got these little metal tip guys you can just go right in here and really get a good amount of saturation in there and so I'll include the link to the Amazon 
page that I got those at. I'll put that in the area below. Just gonna kind of squeeze this little guy in there and finish her off real nice. I'm just kind of doing some some random wrapping for this final bit. Nothing too precise. We'll snip that. And I'm going to leave a little tail so that it's easy to know where to grab it and untie it once I'm rinsing it out. So there you go. Kind of flatten that out. This is a 12 point side mandala and so next we'll be off to the dye station. So here we are at the dye station. I've got my colors picked out and I've got my tie dye wrapped in foil and ready to go for the hot water irrigation. Just a quick disclaimer, I've never actually done the hot water irrigation, like, on a professional status, so I'm not quite sure what to expect, but I'm going to start with our lightest color and go to our darkest color when we're dying, and basically, um, probably going to... Just alternate colors, and I'm going to also just soak this with a little bit of highly concentrated soda ash water. Just to help my dye break the surface of the fabric, because I did let it dry for a while. So, because I've got seven colors, I'm going to go up seven spaces and do another color, maybe even eight, just because we're doing a hot water irrigation and it, I think it's prone to run, the color is. So we'll do every eight sections. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Make sure and get a lot of dye in there. Even reapplying small amounts of dye on your other areas that are already saturated. I might do a little bit of yellow here at the top. And that's not every eight sections, but it's okay. So I've got pink next. And once again, you can go back and reapply some more dye. So, you don't have to try and saturate it on your first little go through. It's actually probably best not to do that.
I just got these needle nose dye bottles I'm really excited about because you can do better dye control. And they were only like five bucks on Amazon, so I can include a link in the section below. This is Baby Blue. There have been mixed reviews about these dye bottles. This is only my second time using them, honestly, but I absolutely love it so far. Some people said they used, um, I think it was hair dye bottles or something. And they apparently liked those better than this. Some people have had the tops blow out, but I don't think that should be an issue with this. This is a royal blue. And I don't know if you can really tell on camera, but I tried to expose the edges that'll take the most amount of dye. Can't really see this top part on the camera very well, but I'm just doing smaller sections up here. This is green. Next we've got purple, and then black. I might have some color transfer. I mean, I'm pretty sure I will just because I'm doing the hot water irrigation, but I'll have some color transfer and just because of how close I'm putting the dyes. And I'm gonna try to leave a little bit of white space in there. We'll see how that works with the hot water irrigation. I honestly don't think it'll plan out or play out like I'm thinking, but we'll see. Alright, so there you have it. And now we're going to dump some hot water on it, and I'm going to let it sit for probably a good 24 hours, 12 to 24 hours at least. It's quite interesting. It almost locks the color in place. I'm gonna let that sit for a second. And dump some more. I don't think I even need this on there, actually. I was thinking about using a sprayer for it, but I don't know that that's necessary. 
I'm sure somebody could offer me a few pointers as far as that goes. scheme up there. And add a little bit of that hot water. So I think some of my colors definitely faded out, but I'm going to leave it and just let it sit for probably, like I said, 12 to 24 hours. And we'll be back for the reveal. Thanks everybody for joining. <laughs>